next curve. Hi everyone, this is Leonard Lee, Managing Director and Founder of Next Curve, and I am here in Santa Clara for Ericsson's uh, Imagine Possible event. And uh, welcome to this episode of the Rethink Podcast. And I have the pleasure of having Yossi Cohen here, who is an EVP and COO of Ericsson North America. We just gave a wonderful presentation on uh, GNP and the role of API. So a lot of you have probably heard about Ericsson's acquisition of uh, Vonage. Well, we're going to get a little insight into why that matters. And, you know, Yossi, it's a pleasure to finally meet you in person. So how you been? Was good. Good? Think, uh, now it looks like we are getting out of this pandemic and we stop traveling and seeing people face to face. I yes. actually met some of my team here for the first time in this yeah. event. Looking well, you know, I'll, I'll tell you right now, you look wonderful in person. Yeah, much better. I mean, much better than, you know, yeah, over um, whatever it was last week when we chatted. But I hope I can say that about you. But <sighs> I'm, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you get what you get. Yeah. So, hey, look, you were just on stage and you gave this really cool presentation about GMP. You talked about the APIs that are going to do some wonderful stuff. So maybe you can uh, give us a little bit of a lowdown or a brief on uh, some of the stuff that you presented up on stage just now. Yeah. I mean, we in Ericsson have been working with telecom for quite some time, right. and you know, you had different types of generation that from voice, SMS, and then a little bit uh, uh, getting into where we are with the 4G, with the mobile broadband for, for devices. But uh. really, when we sat down and we kind of the R and D team were sitting and and the standard team was thinking like, what are we going to do with 5G? What will yeah. be different than 4G? Right. What other kind of ecosystem will it enable? Mm -hmm. It was designed from the get-go to be able to support thousands of devices in an efficient right. way. It was designed yeah. from the get-go to be able to provide differentiated connectivity. Mobile right. broadband devices yeah. today that you use are having actually yeah. universal connectivity. You, you don't know. Mm -hmm. It doesn't care if it is uh, YouTube that yeah. actually can have a buffer of two minutes or if it's a Fortnite that requires extremely low latency right. and responsiveness from the network. Right. And that's not an efficient way if you actually want to increase the load and you want to use it for way more innovation around mm -hmm. the ecosystem. And mm -hmm. we wanted to enable way more application developers mm -hmm. to innovate on top of these platforms right. and to use it in an efficient way so that it would be cost efficient right. for the operators to do so. Mm -hmm. So in order to do this, mm -hmm. basically, you no longer can use the, op the kind of over-the-top type of plan. Right. Because over-the-top means that you just run over the network, right. whatever you run it. Right. In order to do that in an efficient way, actually, the applications need to start talking to the network and the network right. needs to talk right. to them. Right. In order to the application to get what it needs, if right. it needs a split, like super low latency and a very slim throughput, yeah. then it can request this from yeah. the network directly and the mm -hmm. network will provide it to her. You need high throughput on uplink mm -hmm. because you're using an AR glass. Right. Then you ask for this. Mm -hmm. And that will create a way more efficient way of managing the resources in the network that mm -hmm. actually will enable supporting millions of devices right. at the same time, rather, if you manage it in a universal right. way. Yeah, and you know, I think that's a really great point that you're making because I think a, a lot of folks, when they think about the telco network, they traditionally think of just certain classes of devices connecting to it. Yeah. And we, we still haven't really made that uh, meaningful transition as an industry uh, toward thinking about all these new clients, because they're unfamiliar, right? Yes. I mean, yes, we do some IoT here and there, right? There are certain types of devices that are not in the, you know, what most folks think of in terms of like the smartphone, which is sort of the king of the, uh, the mobile networks. Yes. But we're talking about other classes of devices that we need to start being mindful of and, and, and the developers, right? There are these developer communities that are really struggling with well, how do I look at all these options that I have and select the one that works best for me? And I think one of the big things that I hear all the time uh, amongst the developer community is ease of access, right? And then especially as you start to see these new 5G features, and, and if we were to sit there and look forward, uh, some of these more critical functions and features, I mean, you know, 
IT organizations and developer communities, uh, for them, this is going to be a net new, right? So, I mean, what, what, what are your thoughts there in terms of the, the, the con that, that context and how Ericsson's going to be playing forward with uh, what you're doing with GMP as well as the, the API, the yeah. API strategy yeah. that you guys have? No, I mean, but, but, that, but that's the whole premise. I yeah. mean, phones, smartphones yeah. has been for a more than a decade was right. the king, like yeah. you said. Basically, uh, hardware manufacturers put in more and more capabilities so you can, uh, you have better camera, you have better accelerometer, you have other type of attributes right. you have into this platform called phone. You can use yeah. it for augmented reality in a certain extent, yeah. etc. But I mean, it's been quite some time. Yeah. And, and in terms of technology inflection point, you can actually see that the next hardware platform mm -hmm. are coming. We've been there in the right. session, I think two hours, uh, for a length of two hours, basically the only thing everybody was talking about yeah. was metaverse, augmented reality, yeah. uh, and XR. Yeah. And, and yes, and soon there will be the right form factor that will enable you to actually wear, for example, uh, augmented reality glasses and walk in sure. the street with them. Yeah. Soon there will be enough edge compute being deployed to be able to provide you the right compute for that. Right. And you will also need a 5G network because right. otherwise you're only right. going to sit at home and right. use this. So all these things are, are happening. Yeah. And think about how many applications are developed for the smartphone today. Think a about, lot. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and think about the AR glasses. Right. Going to run an AR operating system. Right. You have millions of application developers suddenly have completely new type of capabilities, right. completely new types of sensors, right. walking in the street and suddenly right. you have a completely new set of applications that needs to be developed. Right. So, right. so this is the scale we're yeah. talking about. We yeah. could, five years ago, this was not yeah. possible, but now we are on the verge of getting yeah. there. Yeah, it's not going to happen tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. but for uh, we need to build the infrastructure that will allow this innovation right. and global right. network platform is one right. big ingredient yeah. to enable this. Yeah. And I think you're touching on a really important imperative, right? Especially for operators, whether or not they're uh, operating a public network or private mm -hmm. one, is that it's about the infrastructure, right? It has to be there. The features have to be there. Um, and in, in order for, especially like 5G, right? Um, which it, it comes with a lot of promise. In order for some of those promises to, to be delivered in a differentiated way, like we, were, we talked about this earlier, right? I mean, what is really the difference here that we're talking about regarding 5G versus, let's say, Wi-Fi? And that comparison is made all the time, right? But, you know, um, and, you know, we always, they, there's all this talk about, well, you need to make 5G as easy as, uh, um, you know, uh, Wi-Fi. But, it, I mean, should we be thinking that way? Yeah, or is, is 5G you know, developers in particular, because they might not be used to what we're looking at going forward, uh, should they be thinking differently? I mean, yeah. you mentioned something like uh, um, network aware developer yeah. or something like that, right? Yeah. I, think, I think it's a good question. I, mean, I don't think they are competing technologies, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. I mean, uh, 5G provides you a universal kind of coverage right. that wherever you go. Um, and, and what we did in 5G, and now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the types of functionality that we, uh, that we have there, is when we designed that, we actually put in a lot of knobs that yeah. eventually, through the global network platform, which essentially it's a right. network, it's a basically a platform that abstract all the networks yep. and provide APIs to the, oper right. to the application developers that in a simple way, they can start yeah. using this functionality. Yeah. So for example, everybody talks about all the time about network slicing. Yeah. So you get your own kind of virtual tunnel of, with specific network attributes for your connectivity. Mm -hmm. You need to actually, it, it, you have to provide the, uh, the application developer an API to do that. You can't teach him about network slicing. You can't mm. teach him about, oh, this is the jitter yeah. you need. This is the throughput you need on the app link. Right, right, you, right. you have to simplify and give right. him just the same access they do today with, right. with the, what, what CPAS players like Vonage and others are right. doing. You need to do the same thing for the next generation types yeah. of applications. So in other words, you're kind of saying you don't need to be a network aware developer. I mean, a lot of what, Von, what you guys are looking to do with Vonage is really, like you said, abstract the complexity. Yes express it as an API, then developers can access, and then 
they can uh, start to build uh, new, uh, well, let's call it a new breed of applications. Maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll double 5G applications or a new breed of these uh, that can capitalize on some of the uh, differentiating aspects of 5G. I, is that a fair? It's a fair. Statement? And remember, if I go back into your yeah. Wi-Fi, we are talking about licensed spectrum, which means you right. are managing your resources. When it comes to Wi-Fi, yeah. it's unlicensed spectrum. You actually, yeah. as much as you can try to manage your right. resources, at the end of the day, somebody can come in and yeah. start using them at the same time. Right. So right. this is a bit of a differentiator. Again, there is a room for both. So uh, I believe that, that they will both continue to exist. Right, right. And um, so I just want to drill down really quickly into your comment that they're, they're not competitors. I would have, you know, Wi-Fi versus uh, 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 5G. I, I mean, I would agree with you. I think I, I, I just wanted to be clear on what you mean by that. It's, you're saying that they, they complement each other, right? They have their particular role. Is that sort of what you mean? Yeah, or? I think as, as long as you are uh, okay right. to be very close to your access point at yeah. home, right. Th right. then I think you can do a lot of stuff. Uh -huh. But if you actually want to do a little bit more than that, uh -huh. and, and the number of like use cases uh -huh. that you can do when you actually can walk yeah. and go outside your house, uh -huh. it's, I, think, uh, I think it would be pretty okay. much limited. But again, yeah. there is still right. room for the technology. Right. Okay. So I'd like for you to do two things um, as we close out here. Okay. okay. Number one, your key message to the developers out there, okay? And then number two, your key message to operators out there in terms of what, how they should think about this opportunity going forward uh, with GMP and, uh, and this whole strategy you guys have going on with uh, APIs. Yeah. So just for the application developers, there is a new world for you right now. Suddenly, there is a new platform that will start giving you way more capabilities to innovate on and generate additional revenue. I mean, today you actually are reaching the limit and now you suddenly get access to way more number of APIs, capabilities of the network, location, different types of network slicing. I can see the work that was done using just SMS when it comes to innovation. There are companies that are making billions of dollars just by using two-factor authentication. Other use cases by a simple API that is utilizing a very simple interface. We are talking about way more advanced APIs that will continue to evolve during time. We also want to make your life easier. You don't have to go and try to deal with every CSP. You don't have to think about whether which country your application is working. That, leave this to us. We will actually create a platform that will obstruct all of that. Once you are onboarded into our platform, where every application is going to be used, you will be able to use these capabilities. We will take care of everything else. For the CSPs. Yeah. Yeah, I just touched that you in that room. That. <laughs> Absolutely. First thing, the value of the network is changing. Remember that. There's no longer universal connectivity. You actually have to enable, but also monetize new capabilities in your yeah. network. The other thing is prepare your network to be exposed and come to us and work with us with Global Network Platform and onboard your network into us so we will be exposed to the million uh, application developers we have right now with Vonage. But of course, we're going to work and increase that. Okay, well, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing your insights. And you, I, I really look forward to continuing our conversation because I'd, really, I'd love to explore what are some of these, these um, first use cases or you know, applications that uh, Ericsson and Vonage are seeing together yeah. as you, you move forward with your strategy. Um, it, it, it's a super interesting one, and I think uh, all eyes are on you guys. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. We can follow up together. Yeah. Yeah. I know we will. <laughs> all right. <laughs> wonderful. Uh, wonderful. Thank, thank you, you for you your time. You actually look much better in reality. Really? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And to our Next Curve Rethink listeners and viewers, thank you so much for, um, you know, tuning in and we will see you next time. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to uh, Next Curve, www.next-curve.com and we will see you next time. Visit us at www.next-curve.com.